you know, Leslie Wexner is a fascinating character. He's the founder of L Brands, Victoria's Secret, obviously, a multi-billionaire in his own right, and was one of the most powerful and richest men in the world in the 1980s. It's difficult to forget exactly how central he was to kind of American commerce before the tech sector really took off. Well, what happened with Mr. Wexner? He, it turns out that we know now, was the so original source of Jeffrey Epstein's immense wealth and a lot of the different connections that he made throughout the 80s and 90s, which culminated obviously at the time where he was victimizing young women, but really in some of the worst excesses that we saw from Epstein. Wexner has basically been banished from polite society, you know, rightfully, but he's resurfaced recently in the political world. Let's get, put this up there on the screen. Longtime Epstein associate gave $250,000 to the Republican Governors Association just last month. That's according to three sources with the knowledge of the donation. And actually, he's, uh, it's the first six-figure political contribution that he's given since 2018, 2018 being the year that the Epstein scandal uh, exploded onto the scene. But the, here's why it matters. I don't think people truly understand how crazy this is. Wexner gave Epstein power of attorney over his finances in 1991. And he gifted him that creepy famous mansion, the $56 million mansion in 2011, which means that their relationship spans from the 80s up until the 2010s. Now, there's a lot of questions. How exactly does a multi-billionaire like Leslie Wexner just get taken in by Jeffrey Epstein? You're gonna just sign over power of attorney um, over your finances when you're a multi-billionaire? Yeah, that's really interesting. Put this up there, which is actually, there's been a long investigation into Mr. Wexner and how exactly that all worked out. And what they say here and strongly insinuate, Crystal, is it's almost certain that Epstein had something on Wexner. You know, the idea is that he was somehow bamboozled and taken in by him. I simply don't believe it. That's the narrative that Wexner has put out there. Wexner's only addressed it once, basically saying, you know, I never would have guessed that a person I employed more than a decade ago would have caused so much pain to so many people. You know, basically use the same Bill Gates defense of, I wish I never met him, but Let's move on now. That right. He's dead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, he yeah. sort of almost portrays himself as like a yeah. Victim he's, of he's, he wants you to believe he's you know the that he's the like he right. was taken advantage of. Poor right. little innocent billionaire. No. How could he have possibly known that uh, second tear sheet you put up there from mm -hmm. the New York Times? What that also demonstrates is that Epstein was using his proximity to Wexner and the Victoria's Secret brand to hold himself out. Like he was a modeling right. Agent. Yeah, say so we recruited a lot of young girls. Right. Yeah. So this was his. This was part of his scheme to get close to a lot of young girls. And it is documented that Wexner was alerted mm -hmm. to this behavior. There were two senior executives that warned him that this was going on. So for him to pretend like he had no idea, and oh my goodness, how could anyone have known? And I feel so bad that I could have been associated with such a nefarious person. Come on now. You had at least some warnings that there were some things going on that shouldn't have been going on, and yet you continued to not only associate with him, but to provide him with the funds to have mm -hmm. the lifestyle that enabled his behavior, allowed him to get into all of these elite circles, which came not only with uh, you know access to high corridors of power on both the, both the Democratic and Republican Party side, but also provided you with protection. I mean, that's why he was allowed to get away with it for so many years. That's why he was able to cut such a sweetheart deal in Florida that he was, you know, serving out his short sentence, hanging out at his office in Palm Beach, where he was able to get this, you know, sort of blanket like, okay, and that's it. We're not going to have any more lawsuits after this for many of these other victims. And by the way, I'm going to let all my associates off the hook as well. All of that was set up and enabled by Leslie Wexner. Yeah. And for Republicans after a couple years of saying, hey, you know, when well, stay away for a while. Well, talking also about, you know, Hillary and Bill Clinton and the Epstein, which is a totally legit case. Yep. Why are you taking this guy's but money? Now that the, yeah. now that the, you know, attention is a little bit, a little bit dimmed, they're happy to take his 250K to the Republican Governors Association. And you also have to wonder, 
whether Wexner may be thinking about his own liability and thinking about, hey, you know, might might not be a bad thing for me to ha- continue to have some friends in high places, just in case there is some sort of investigation or potential accountability for me down yeah. the line. It's funny too, you know, he claims he was taken in in 1991. He's only 84 years old. Okay, I wasn't even born in 1991, so that means he was like 50 years old. Oh yeah, a feeble old man at 50. Right. Yeah, I don't think so. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> like, right. It's not. Yeah. yeah it's like, exactly. oh, the poor little 50. 50-year-old was taken advantage of. No, Poor thing, poor thing. It is clear as day to me, given what happened and how many people inside of his own company warned him about what Epstein was doing and some of the other dramatically shady behavior and then the eventual gifting of the mansion that Epstein had something on Wexner 100%. There's one other piece of this too, which is that uh, one of Epstein's survivors, Maria Farmer, alleged that Epstein actually assaulted her at Wexner's Ohio mm-hmm. compound in 1996. Right. She said she was held against her wishes there for 12 hours. Wexner and his wife say they had no, they of course had no idea. Right. Well, by the way, they deny all of this for the lawyers. Yeah, uh, Yeah, they deny all of this. But yeah. I think if nothing else, that shows you how close these two men were, that he felt entitled to just have carte blanche at Wexner's mm-hmm. estate and carry out his evil and heinous acts. I also think it's gross because I think this was probably orchestrated by uh, Mike DeWine. It seems that, Mm. uh, so apparently Wexner is the wealthiest Republican donor in the state of Ohio. And he's been giving donations only to Ohio-based candidates, people like Representative Joyce Beatty, um, also to Representative, or Senator Rob Portman and Mike DeWine previously. I think it's clear here that DeWine probably pulled probably some facilitated strings, facilitated the facilitated donation. The donation. Uh, look, I'm calling on them, and I think everybody should in order to return this money. Screw him. Screw his ill-gotten gains. Uh, we still have a lot of questions, and Mr. Wexner isn't welcomed on the show at any time. I would love to interview him. <laughs> yeah. <Indeed. laughs> yeah. I'll hold, hold my breath. Hey, guys. Thanks so much for watching. That's right. Just as a reminder, you can become a premium subscriber today. Watch the full show completely uncut. Our reactions to each other's monologues. You get to listen to it. You get to ask us questions. All that good stuff. Link is right there in the description or at breakingpoints.com. Best of all, great way to say screw you to the mainstream media.